I was here on Monday. Okay. Didn't we get like four physics? Practice quizzes, yeah. Those have been on my website. Should I just do it on a. You didn't make it up yet? Um, there's extra copies over there, but in the future you need to be caught up by now. I'll let you take the quiz next Wednesday during the advisory. Okay, y'all need to be in your seats. I don't know if you're here. I'm not guesstimating here. The bell rang. Y'all need to be moving that way. Uh, last chance before we start our quiz, I asked you guys to turn in 8, 9, and 10 into Google Classroom. But if for some reason you weren't able to, I still give you one more chance to still get full points. Uh, I decided to do points on 9 and 10 this time. So if you still need to turn those in because you didn't listen to me to turn them into Google Classroom last time and then you forgot to or your internet wasn't working on any reason at all this is your last chance to not get late credit so make sure your name is on those and that's in the basket that is before we start not after we start after is considered late so you need to do that first then phones and uh, smart watches need to be on the sideboard if you didn't do that already and as we talked about last time, you shouldn't need a calculator on this one, but we actually allow one. So if you remember why I said that might be, then maybe that will be beneficial to you. But go ahead, put your name on it, and number it, and you can start. Just put it in the basket. I mean, I know what they are. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to just put them in Google Classroom? Yes. Yes. If y'all turn them in Google Classroom, you don't also have to turn them in hard copy. I really just need either or. later than normal. So I'm trying to give them a chance to take their quizzes. 
But point is, you're not going to remember where it goes in your binder unless you number it as 11 today. And then at first glance, it should look just like the practice quiz. So you should feel rewarded if you put in a good effort there. And then like we did with the first quiz, unless you're out of time, I'd recommend that you check your answers. This one, all of them are one point each. So I do partial credit, but not on one point questions. So you know, if you did uh, one half, but the answer is negative one half. The negative makes a big difference in trig. It's not just like a little sign error like in algebra. So you would lose that point. So double check to eliminate as much of that as possible. When you finish, you can come bring it up and put it in the basket. There's a handout that we will go over afterwards. And then you're welcome to pick your phones back up and wait for everyone else to finish. If you feel like you need some scratch room for anything, the back of the page is blank. So feel free to use that.
Thank you. You need this handout too. As you guys finish, just find something quiet to work on. Make sure everyone else has time to work in peace. Again, make sure y'all are also checking your answers. You're not getting any extra points for turning it in quicker.
another stapler. I think this one's broke.
So again, there was a handout. There was a handout I wanted you to pick up in the current quiz in. Did anybody else forget it? Okay, so we're going to start looking at section 4.3. We're going to talk about the notes at least. Um, and this section really is broken up into two parts. And the notes are kind of the same way. The front page represents uh, some, one type of thing that we're going to do. And then the back is really for a second thing. So we spend a little bit longer in section 4.3 for those reasons. And this is the last section in our first unit. So after we spend a few class periods on 4.3, we'll still quiz 4.3, and then we'll review, and then our first test will be over 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. Um, so once you get your quizzes back, usually you have a good idea of what to study for that. Okay, the first part of this is stuff that you guys did back in geometry, um, but if you don't remember it, then we need you to relearn it. But before I get going too much on here, notice that there's a statement that you're still going to be using the unit circle. If you didn't feel like you prepared well enough for today's quiz, don't kick that can down the road. Unit circle is going to show up practically every day all semester. So do what you got to do to get that mastered. <clears throat> but what we're going to review on the front page here is how to use SOHCAHTOA to find side lengths, ratios, and angles. So again, same thing you guys learned in geometry. I know your ACT, I think, always asks, like it usually has four trait questions, and two of them are usually SOHCAHTOA questions, so that should help out with that as well. Um, but we need this for our trig stuff. So SOHCAHTOA, you remember SOH, the first three letters, are just a quick way to remind us that sine is always the opposite length over the hypotenuse. The middle three letters are a quick way to remind us that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the last three letters are to remind us that the tangent ratio is the opposite length over the adjacent length. You've heard all of that before, right? Okay, well now that we know the reciprocal angles, you really know three others. If sine and cosecant are reciprocals, this one would be op hypotenuse over opposite secant and cosine are reciprocals, so hypotenuse over adjacent, and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, so adjacent over opposite. So those kind of just go without saying no. So the first thing we need to look at is how to use SOHCAHTOA to set up an equation so that we can find a side length. And for this we really need to have two examples, and you'll see why in just a second, but SOHCAHTOA is considered right triangle trig, which means it only works on right triangles. Most everything we do is considered right triangle trig. But to be able to find the side length, we would have to know um, how big one of these angles are. So let's say this one's like 29, and let's say this one's 58. Doesn't matter. But we're going to have to look from one of the acute angles, not look from the right angle. And then we're going to try to pair that up with a side length that we know the, or we want to find the length of. So on this one, we'll find this side length. On this one, we'll find that side length. And you have to pair it up with the side length that you do know the length of. So let's say this one's 10, and I don't know. Over here, this one's 7. Numbers don't matter. But how SOHCAHTOA is supposed to help you out here is when you look at this, we can use a SOHCAHTOA equation that's only going to have the one variable that we're trying to solve for. So then if we solve that and put it in the calculator correctly, we can figure out how big this is. So the key to this is you have to know how to spell SOHCAHTOA so that you remember these relationships. And... Um, you need to know what the difference between opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is always the biggest side, it's opposite the biggest angle, the 90. But opposite and adjacent are relative. It just 
it depends on what you're looking from. On this one, if we're looking from 29 degrees, if we're choosing to look at this angle, because you could find this angle and look from it if you wanted to, I don't know why you would, but directly across is opposite and next to it, that's not already the hypotenuse is adjacent. So for this left triangle, I want to find the opposite length when I know the hypotenuse length. And so Katoa tells me then do that with a sine equation. Because sine, looking at this angle, is opposite over hypotenuse. And that creates an equation that has only the one unknown. And so we can solve that and get our answer. Okay, on our second example over here, what is this side that I don't want to use? Is this opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Okay, it's directly across from 58, so this is opposite. So if I don't know opposite and I don't care to find opposite, just think of the word Sokotoa. Sine's not a possibility then, and tangent's not a possibility, because they those both include opposite. So it must be a cosine <coughs> equation. Cosine pairs up the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the reason I needed you to do two examples here is because to finish these and to solve them, it depends. If x is in your numerator, it's gonna solve one way, but if x is in your denominator, it's gonna solve a different way. This one on the left is probably the easiest one for you because it's just undoing divide 10. So multiply both sides by 10. And there is your exact answer. 10 times the sine of 29 degrees. I think if when you see it on the ACT, I think that's pretty much how they leave it too. But if you needed to type it in your calculator to round, that's about 4.848. Of course, your calculator would have to be in degree mode because that's 29 degrees. Over here, the shortcut that I take is I just remember these two switch places. So x equals 7 over the cosine of 58. If you don't want to memorize that step, then you could multiply both sides by x. And that's an improvement because now there's no longer fractions. And then you can divide both sides by the cosine of 58 degrees. So the exact answer is 7 divided by the cosine of 58. But you can put that in your calculator, and it is about 13.210. Now, this doesn't guarantee that you get the question right, but keep in mind something that you guys already know is that the hypotenuse is the biggest side. So like on this first one we did, it makes sense that our answer was less than 10. Again, that doesn't promise that that means it's right, but if this answer was somehow bigger than 10, that would be problematic. And over here, we were solving for the hypotenuse, so it had to be bigger than 7, so we at least knew that. Also, not that you guys probably care at this point in the year, but when we round in this class, we always ask you to round to three decimal places. Um, because a lot of you guys will move on to AP Calculus next year and that AP exam expects you to round the three decimal places all the time and it doesn't even tell you to round that way. They just expect you to know it around that way. So, Okay, so we had to do two because X could be in your numerator or X could be in your denominator. How you solve them is a little bit different. This is familiar. Anything clarification you want to ask about finding sides before we move on? Because this is all of that part we're going to look at today. Okay. All right, you can also use Sokotoa to find angle measures. And I, this typically is one that you guys see in geometry, but you didn't practice as much. So still same old Sokotoa. But in this case, let's say we wanted to find out how big is angle A have to be if maybe this is, I don't know, if this is 3 and 4. 
So in this question, I'm trying to solve for angle A. That's the variable I want to solve for. So I can't have any other unknowns in my equation. So I don't know the hypotenuse, and I don't care about the hypotenuse length, which means sine is not a possibility because it includes hypotenuse, and cosine is not a possibility because it includes hypotenuse. Only tangent allows me to pair up the opposite side, which I know. Opposite is directly across. And the adjacent side, which is next to it, that's not the hypotenuse. But you need one more step here. And we actually do an entire section of this here in a couple months. But to go from tangent of A equals to just A equals is you have to do this thing called inverse. Inverse tangent. So in your calculator, when you need inverse sine, you hit second sine. You want inverse cosine, second cosine. You want inverse tangent, you have to hit second tangent. But then otherwise, we put that in the calculator, hit enter. I'm in degree mode, so the answer it's giving me is degrees. So we'll practice a little bit of that in this section too. Okay, and then the last thing we need with Sokotoa in this section, again, we're going to practice some of this in the book next class, but today we're just going to finish up the notes. Um, it's just some ratio stuff. So I feel like if you can do those top two, then you can probably do this one as well. But if I gave you two lengths of a right triangle, A. Let's say 3 and 5. You should be able to give all six trig functions from that angle. So the sine from angle A, the cosine from angle A, the tangent from angle A, and the other three, all six. And even though we're just kind of dipping our toes in this, this is how trig does start to get easier over time because you shouldn't be learning the reciprocal functions anymore. You should know which ones are reciprocals. That shouldn't be new to you. But if I'm just strictly using Sokotoa, I can really only answer one of these right away. Which one of these six do you know the answer to? Sine. Sine, because we know opposite and hypotenuse. So three fifths. Okay, somebody else. Now that we know sine, what would be another easy one? Sorry, y'all have to speak up a little bit. Go see again. So five thirds, just a reciprocal. For these others, we're going to need to know the adjacent side. So I need to know this link down here. How can we do that? Perfect. Pythagorean theorem. We use it quite a bit. Again, it only works on right triangles. And you guys do a pretty good job with Pythagorean theorem. But the big mistake is C has to be the hypotenuse. This leg could be A or B. This leg could be the other A or B. But hypotenuse has to be C. If you don't do that, then it's not going to work. So we could do Pythagorean theorem to find the third side which happens to be the adjacent. So Katoa tells me if I want cosine answer, put adjacent over hypotenuse. I know secant's just a reciprocal of that. And then So Katoa tells me if I want tangent, do opposite over adjacent, and cotangent's the reciprocal of that. So it sounds like it's going to be a lot because it wants six answers, but as you guys are figuring out, the reciprocal ones usually don't take much effort. Know the difference between opposite adjacent and hypotenuse and be able to spell the word Sokotoa. And then with a little bit of practice, we can do anything on this front side. Okay. Any questions y'all want to ask about the front of this page? Any quick clarification you'd like to have?
Okay, so next class we will, we're going to do the back two. The next class we will have a book assignment to practice some of those things and make sure that you're doing them correctly before you get assessed on them. But as I said, 4.3 is really in two halves, so we balance that out by spending a few more class periods on it. But the second half of 4.3 is about proving trig identities. So everything in trigonometry is connected in some way. There's lots and lots and lots of relationships. Too many to memorize everything that's true. So what we do is we memorize the basics and then sometimes we prove that using the basics we prove that some other stuff is true. So not next class but a couple classes from now we will have a quiz where you have to show us that you've memorized these things and I even tell you how it shows up on the quiz whether the section is matching or fill in the blank I tell you in the direction so you know how well you have to know each of those but these are considered the basics these are the basic identities if you opened up a textbook and the front cover this would be some of the stuff in that the, the binder part the hardcover part now, you guys should already know a couple of these, so we're going to start off with the easiest ones and we'll work out to the couple you haven't seen yet. <clears throat> so I would say these blanks are for you to check off once you're sure you know it. I think most of you should know the reciprocals. Sine is the reciprocal of cosecant, cosine is the reciprocal of secant, and tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. If sine is the reciprocal of cosecant, then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Just doing 1 over is an easy mathematical way to say reciprocal. But hopefully you guys already know those. I hope you don't have to study those. Okay, I think you may not know the name for this one, even though I said it once, but I bet you used it on your quiz today. How do you go about finding tangent values? Yeah. Okay, if you take a sine value divided by a cosine value, that is called the quotient identity. If you don't have that one memorized yet, you will soon enough because we use it to death. Now this one, l let me throw out a wrong answer here real quick. In fact, write down this wrong answer and then put a line through it. Co sure, cotangent is 1 over tangent, but that's not a quotient identity. That's a reciprocal identity. If tangent sine over cosine and cotangent's the reciprocal, then you can do cosine over sine. That's considered the quotient identity. So, with a minute or two of work, I feel like you should be quick to know those and be ready to fill in the blank quiz those. Co-functions, okay, go down to even odd. So, you didn't have to know even and odd for today's quiz, but it would have helped you on a couple questions. So, uh, the way I push you guys to do that is there is two even functions. And what it means to be even is whether you plug in a positive angle or a negative angle, they're going to be equal. The other four are odd. So sine of negative theta does not equal the sine of positive theta. Cosecant of negative theta doesn't equal cosecant of positive theta. However, these do equal each other if you multiply one of them by a negative one. Sorry, I can't remember. Was it this class? Did I show you all the unit circle example of these to help you see what we're doing with that? Okay, I'm saying a couple of yeses. So if you didn't memorize those for today's quiz, that's fine, but I told you you were going to have to memorize them for something else anyway. So. You have a little bit of a shortcut if you took my advice there. You can check that off once you feel like you know those. And then there's one more that we talked about once, but 
you didn't have to know it yet, and that would be at the top. The six trig functions in terms of x, y, and r. So I did this at the start of our 4.2 notes. We talked about a right triangle centered at the origin that lands on a circle. So to this angle, this side is opposite, this is hypotenuse, and this is adjacent. But if you're thinking of it in a coordinate plane like this, this isn't just opposite, it's the distance you're going up and down. So y. This is not just adjacent, this is the distance you're going left or right, so x. And instead of calling this the hypotenuse, we could call this the radius of the circle. So sure, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, still Sokotoa. But instead of saying opposite over hypotenuse, sometimes you put it in terms of y and r. Instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, we could do x over r. And tangent, instead of opposite over adjacent, you could do y over x. And honestly, if you know those three, the other three should be gimmies because you get to just flip them over. So I don't care if you memorize those or if you practice sketching this figure to help yourself memorize, uh, figure out what they are in the moment, but you'll need to be able to produce those for us. So you've seen that one, but I didn't tell you you had to learn it yet. Okay, and then there are two more that you have not seen yet. Uh, let's do the co-function ones first. This one is less important than the Pythagorean identities. Um, and this one won't mean much to you until we do graphing. But again, you've got to start somewhere. So it'll be helpful for you to mark somehow that sine and cosine are co-functions. Secant and cosecant are co-functions, and tangent and cotangent are co-functions. And what it means to be a co-function is that sine and his co-function and cosine and his co-function relate in this way. The cosine of an angle is the same as the sine of its complement. And the sine of an angle is the same as the cosine of its complement. And without boring you to death with that, if you think about like the sine of 60 degrees is the same as the cosine of 30 degrees. The cosine of 60 is the same as the sine of 30. That's all that's saying. Think about those values on the unit circle. The x value at 30 is the same thing as the y value at 60. The x value at 60 is the same as the y value at 30. That's all that's saying. And then these are also cofunctions. So the complementary angle or the cosecant of an angle is the same as the secant of its complement or the secant of an angle is the same as the cosecant of its complement. Of course instead of 90 degrees I could also be writing pi over 2 radians and then tangent and cotangent. So at this point in the year with cofunctions you need to recognize that pattern because they're all written the same way and then know which ones are cofunctions with each other. Sine and cosine, secant and cosecant, tangent and cotangent. And in about a month from now, uh, when we do graphing, it's why the sine and cosine graphs will look the same, secant and cosecant graphs will be very similar, and the tangent and cotangent graphs will be very similar. But for now, you just need to be able to at least match those up. These six answers with those six questions. All right, and then the big ones are the three Pythagorean identities. So I really, really want you to memorize this first one. Actually, let's talk about this for a second. The first one says that if you take the sine of an angle and square it, plus the cosine of the same angle and square it, it always equals one. Now when we talk about squaring trig functions, we write it this way. Well, we don't write it this way. You don't say sine theta squared like this because it looks like you're talking about squaring the angle, which 
I can't think one time in mathematics where that is what we do. What we really want is sine times sine, sine squared, but in trig we don't write it like this either. It's just It's a little cumbersome. So instead we put it here. But this means sine theta times sine theta. Cosine squared, write it like that. But it means cosine theta times cosine theta. If you memorize that one, I can tell you a trick to figure out the other two without memorizing them. But once again, I'd like you guys to at least see where some of this stuff is coming from, especially when it's just an extension of stuff you already know. So it's not just totally memorize it and not have any relationship to it. But once again, if I did a circle, if I did a right triangle, um, what can I call this length? Actually, I'm sorry. Ignore that for just a second. We could do Pythagorean theorem, right? But instead of calling this side A, what else could I call it? Distance left and right is? Okay. And instead of calling this side B, what could I call that? Okay, and instead of calling this hypotenuse, I could call it R. And one more step, if we're specifically talking about unit circle, R is one, and if it's a unit circle, there's a trig function that's equal to X. Oh, all right, it's cosine, so cosine squared, and then there's a trig function when you're on the unit circle that's equal to Y. Sine, and so that's where the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. It's really just the same old Pythagorean theorem you've always seen in terms of x, y, and r, and then specifically unit circle. But you don't have to derive that for me. I just wanted you to see where it came from. Okay, if you can memorize that one, there's a trick to memorizing the other two, or not memorizing them, but so you don't have to memorize them. If you divide everything by sine squared, you can come up with the second one. So what is sine squared divided by sine squared? One. Anything divided by itself is one. Okay, what is cosine over sine? Right, look up here, cotangent. That part's a little easier after you learn this, but if cosine over sine gives you cotangent, then cosine squared divided by sine squared is gonna be cotangent squared. And what's another way to say one over sine? Okay, so if one over sine is cosecant, then one over sine squared would be so cosecant squared. That's the second Pythagorean identity. And I'll be honest, at the beginning of every year, like if you just said, what's the second one? That's what I would have to do in my head. I'd think sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. If I divide all of them by sine squared, I get one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. Okay, and then for the last one, you can divide them all by cosine squared. So sine over cosine is tangent but sine squared over cosine squared would be tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared would be one, because anything divided by itself is one. One over cosine would be secant, so one over cosine squared would be secant squared. Memorize the first one, and then make sure you know the process to find the second and the third, and you don't have to memorize those. But those are more important, so again, this quiz is not next class, but I wanted to make sure you guys had that filled out in your notes because I think you should spend a few minutes and try to memorize maybe a couple of these sections that are new to you. We'll be filling the blank when we get to that point. Okay, anything that you want immediate clarification on on the back page? Yes.
These two? I didn't, yeah. Okay. Just like the process and why you do it. Well, the reason why is it's just an easy way to keep up with the second, what the second and third one are. Because I'm dividing everything by the same thing when I'm doing these, it keeps it equivalent without messing anything up. Um, I mean, I guess you can just straight up memorize those two, but like anything you memorize, you're going to forget some of it sometimes. So, like, on the quiz, is it going to say, like, what's the second factor I'm going to do? I'm sorry? Wait, on the quiz, is it going to say, like, what's the second? It'll just ask, what are the three? Okay. Or it might be, like, this. And if you know sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, then you got your answer. Okay, so the way I got the second one is I divided the entire first one by sine squared. Sine squared divided by sine squared is 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. Cosine squared divided by sine squared is cotangent squared. Do you know why that's the case? Okay, yeah. I'm looking, I'm thinking of this guy. If cosine over sine is cotangent, then cosine squared over sine squared would be cotangent squared. With our reciprocal identities, 1 divided by sine would be cosecant, but this is 1 divided by sine squared, so it's cosecant squared. So I'm just dividing every term by sine squared, and I discovered the second one without memorizing it. Or divide all of them by cosine squared, And then you can figure out the third one without having to memorize it. I'm just trying to give you some options. Now, again, it's kind of hard for me to show you guys why this is so important um, without just diving into those question types. And so you just have to trust me for right now. But next class, we will practice some SOHCAHTOA, find side links, find angles, set up ratios from a book assignment. So that part should be a little bit smoother because you've done that in the past. And then you'll need to memorize the back page. And then two classes from now, I will have you take a quiz over showing us that you've memorized this so that we can actually start doing some trig proofs and showing that other things are also true. So that's the plan. Um, you guys still have about 30 minutes. So even though you don't have this memorization quiz next class, 30 minutes could be enough time to memorize a couple of these sections. So I highly suggest that you take that time out to do that. But if you see any questions I can help with, just let me know.